everyone, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholars. So as you saw from the introduction of this video, uh, I'm in for a very interesting uh, discussion or discussion that's uh, perhaps not um, typical to the discussions I do. This is more of amusing, actually. But I think it's very important because these, these, some of these musings or some of what I, I call these esoteric thoughts are very profound and, and can actually produce a lot of um, um, interesting and profound information about how our world works. And, and certainly the, the topic that I'm going to be talking about today is um, it would definitely fall into that, that category, into that case. And, uh, you know, this really is online with a lot of these questions um, that, that, that we hear uh, throughout the ages, uh, such as, why is the sky blue? What, why does my shirt have a certain color? Why, um, on a smoky afternoon, as the sun goes down, is it it's so red and orange and, and brilliant in color? You know, these are probably questions that, that people throughout the ages of, of, of the history of humanity have asked, and we actually have the ability um, to, to answer uh, to some extent. Um, a, a lot of these basically um, what I would call esoteric or ancient questions. And so what I'm going to be talking about today is something uh, known as a photochromatic lens. Um, the, the specific lens that I showed you earlier on in the video is actually known as a transitions lens. And this lens is, the transition is actually a trademark name. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gener generically call these lenses uh, photochromatic. Uh, just so I don't get in any trouble and, and just so I can cover uh, the, the wide variety of the lenses that we have out here. And I'll talk about the, the process, the most commonly used process th to create these lenses. Um, of course, these lenses are nothing new. They've been around since the, the 1960s. And, and obviously, the technology has... has, has pr uh, progress quite a bit, and they're certainly a lot more efficient than they than they were in the 60s. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and ask ourselves why do these transition lenses work, or these photochromatic lenses work. So, what we do is when we're manufacturing this lens, what we'll do is we'll take um, silver and um, chloride ions. Be very specific, silver and chloride ions. So, what I'll do is I'll take silver as an ion, Ag plus and then chlorine as an ion, or chloride. And as you can tell, uh, through the Coulombic interaction, there's, there's going to be a bonding here, and this will create an ionic bond. And, and specifically in this case, what we'll do is we'll create a crystal, a, a very tiny crystalline structure of silver um, chloride. And of course, this is a very strong bond, very small crystals. crystals. We cannot see them with the naked eye, uh, but they are there nonetheless. So then I would ask, well, what happens in the presence of ultraviolet light? And really, that's how these photochromatic lenses work, is they darken in response to exposure to ultraviolet light. And not obviously, these are not dark, and I have plenty of light coming in. So there must be something very unique about light, or ultraviolet light. And if you guys remember uh, from my light videos, and my atomic model, and when I talked about photon-electron interactions, um, you would remember that uh, ultraviolet light has very small wavelengths, or very small lambda. Um, and we know that the smaller the wavelength, the more energy. Versus visible light has very relatively larger lambda, larger wavelengths, and, and subsequently less energy. So ultraviolet light has a significant amount of energy, and of course ultraviolet light can be very damaging uh, to our eyes. And because um, it can promote electrons to higher energy levels and even ionize those electrons, get rid of them. And of course, that can break chemical bonds and that can wreak all kinds of biological havoc. Okay, so in the presence of ultraviolet light, something rather interesting happens. So I have my silver chloride. Ultraviolet light comes in, small wavelength, and it, it, it adds a lot of energy to this ion, enough energy to break to break this ionic bond. It actually breaks the ionic bond. So now what I have is I have silver all by its lonesome and chlorine, or rather the silver and chlorine ions all by themselves. And then, just to add a little bit more complexity, chlorine is also, or the chloride ion is also hit by ultraviolet light. And we know that chloride has an extra electron, 
And when that ultraviolet light hits that electron, what do you suppose is going to happen? Well, it gives that electron enough energy to ionize it, to get rid of this electron. So then what I end up having is chlorine sub naught, and that's just neutral chlorine, a neutral charge, plus an electron all by itself. And hopefully you guys can see that here, plus an electron. Put that down there so you can see it. So I have chlor neutral chlorine and an electron. Well, that electron is then going to go over here to the silver, because the silver has a positive charge. It's a silver ion. And silver is going to become neutral. And chlorine is already neutral. And I have silver and chlorine in their um, elemental or their neutral state. And this, these two um, elements are going to build up. And that's actually what's going to create that dark film on our glasses. So you can see this question is actually a rather, rather interesting question and there's actually a rather large amount of applied chemistry going on here. So this is one of those really cool questions we can ask that, that really brings applied chemistry to light. And not only do we have chemistry going on, but we really get to the fundamental concepts of how light and electrons interact and how we get this to occur. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. Okay, everybody, so that is the basic introduction to photochromatic lenses and um, how the lens uh, changes to that dark color. Uh, and this is through the agency of ultraviolet light, uh, basically giving energy to the uh, silver chloride um, ion crystal and uh, breaking the bonds and then giving um, an electron enough energy um, to basically break free uh, from the chlorine, if you will, it, it um, uh, the ionization energy is enough to get rid of that 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 electron. Um, so clearly, ultraviolet light actually has quite a bit of energy, and then that electron can then um, combine with the uh, positively charged silver to make neutral silver, and then I have neutral chlorine, and those uh, that produces this this um, dark film um, that we see on our, our glasses. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and talk about how that process is then reversed. And um, hopefully you guys find this interesting. Thanks for hanging in there. Take care. Bye-bye.